Pleasant Valley and its associated transition zones have wasted no time providing me with sewing kits so that I can finally do this. Now it's time to see what other treasures this favorite zone of mine has in store, then maybe Mystery Lake? Who knows? The world is open. I go where I want, and I'm loving it. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of the Long Dark in our Against All Odds series. So, it is time to head... Hang on, let me take a quick look around, make sure I'm not overlooking anything that I didn't search. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Anything over here? Nope, nope, nope. Anything underneath? Nope. Okay. Weather seems pretty nice. What I'm gonna do is head in the general direction, and by general I mean exact direction, of the barn. The only food I have at the moment is a cup of coffee, which counts as food. Don't question it. So we're going that direction. And to stay warm, I could have, you know, heated it up before I left and drank it. That would have been possibly a good thing to do. But I'm just going to beeline straight along this quote-unquote road. Actually, yeah, it's, it's more this way that we need to go, isn't it? I can see the path that I was thinking I was on right there. I always think that it's out the bottom of Thompson's Crossing, but it's actually over here. This is the one that you need to follow, because it intersects with the road at the same spot where Thompson's Crossing sort of branches off, but it's not the same road. So if you don't know what I'm doing, or why I care about this particular path, this is the easiest way if you want to go straight from Thompson's Crossing to the barn without having to walk out onto the road and stay on the road. Of course, there is an advantage to being on the road because you walk a little bit faster. But this literally takes you to the barn. And also, when you have weather like this, it's easy to kind of scan the horizon and make sure that you are not approaching any wolves. That's one of the things I like about this approach path in Pleasant Valley. And I know I joked in the beginning of the episode about it being my favorite zone ever, heavily implying that it's not. As I've said many times in the meta series, and honestly in the last couple of Against All Odds series that I did before the channel went on break, I think that, I mean, I, I really enjoy this zone a lot more than I used to, to be completely straightforward about it. It is a better zone with the additions that were made when its relevant story content came out years back. It's a better zone than it used to be. So as much as a meme as Pleasant Valley has been for me over the years, I don't hate it as much as I used to, just to be clear. I need to find some place to it's just, it's place. fun to keep the meme going. So that we can share a giggle. I am getting cold, but as you can see, I am rapidly approaching the barn. I know you can't see the barn yet because it's behind that rock, but there it is. And the other thing about this approach is that it continues at a reasonable and useful elevation even until this critical moment when you need to actually approach anything really the barn. Bad. And I can see very clearly, for example, that, all right, there is a wolf on the other side of the barn, but I should be able to sneak my way in without upsetting that particular critter. Anything on the porch here? Nope. Okay, I think what I'll do, I'm going to lose a little bit of health to the cold here but it's probably worth checking Wait. both of these tractors very quickly. So cold. I'm warming up a bit. No, you're not. No, you're not, Jennifer. Don't don't get that excited. Let's go ahead and pop in here. I don't want to lose well fed if I can manage it. I've managed to hold on to it so far. All right, let me get in here before the wolf decides to take a whiff in my general direction. All right, nothing there. Inside we go. All right, I'm hoping for just one food item to keep me above well-fed. It's not guaranteed, but I'm going to go to the place where I feel like I'm most likely to find it, and then we'll search the rest of the barn momentarily. Hi, barn. Good to see you. Ooh, archery book. Well, this stuff will come in handy. Accelerant, nice. Now, I am not warm enough in here. That's good to note. Okay. Suddenly not looking promising in terms of 
Oh, there's a candy bar. Give me that. Give me that. 250 calories. I'll take it. And I still, of course, have the coffee as an emergency ration. I just need to start a fire downstairs, it seems, as soon as I can. Because right now, it's pretty cold. Hey, scrap metal. So I've picked up a few pieces of scrap metal so far. You can hear my character already getting hungry again. But thankfully, I haven't searched everywhere I can yet. There's still potentially some locations downstairs where I could find food. There may even be a bedroll here if I'm lucky, but I, I'm, I don't know for sure. All right, let me search the surroundings of those. Nope, nothing here. Nothing in the bed of the truck. Let's poke in here and see if there's anything in the glove box. We are warming up in here a little bit, which is nice. So we don't need a fire per se. Hey, there's a stim. I remember when those mattered. <laughs> they still matter. But we just finished a run on the channel of As the Dead Sleep, and finding that would have made me very happy, especially finding it in that particular spot. <laughs> so it's good to have that. All right, so there's a wool scarf. That's really useful. It's in good condition, too. So that's some additional headgear for us. Thank you, Barn. I appreciate you so much. Anything back here? Uh, no, nope, doesn't look like it. We might have to keep moving towards the farmhouse. I would love to, love to stay, Barn, but we don't exactly have all the calories in the world. So cold in my life. Yeah, hypothermia risk is is decent at the moment. All right, let's. Did I check that when I came in? I clearly didn't. I walked right past it. All right, let's grab that cloth. Anything underneath? Nope. Anything here? Nope, not really. Nothing underneath the truck, it seems. Wait a minute, what's that? Oh, there's a pry bar under the truck. Hey, all right. Barn is now my friend. Now, we are pretty encumbered at the moment, and that's annoying. Let me drink some water to deal with that. And I can probably drop some of the books I'm carrying and some of the spray paint. Let's drop five of the books. There, that's a lot less weight to lug around. And I can drop some of this wood. I can probably also drop, yeah. If I drop the lower condition of the torches I'm carrying. That's fine. All right, now I'm no longer encumbered. Okay. Here's what I'll do. Just to get a really hot, I'm going to get a just super hot fire going really fast. I can use technically an accelerant if I wanted to. I don't think I need to though. Let's use a cattail head, wood match, 80% starting chance. Let's start a fire. I need to find food. I know. We're going to, ah, uh, okay. That didn't <laughs> I don't think I've heard that line before. Not in that exact way. Just the frustration in it was fantastic. That Come on, little fire. didn't Come on. work. No, it didn't. Always fun to fail on an 80% start chance. Damn it. I love wasting matches. This is great. So speaking of that, <laughs> I've had a few commenters ask me, speaking of this exact thing, um, don't forget, or they'll either, they, they will either ask me why I don't do it, or they'll say, don't forget, you can do this. Um, you can light a match, or you can light a torch with a match. Perfect. Hang on, I'll finish that thought in just a second. Let's put some coal on the fire so it's nice and warm. You can light a torch with a match. Let's heat up the coffee. Now, I want to go ahead and add some additional coal to this just to get it as hot as possible, as fast as possible. Let's drink that. That's going to give us a few calories. I don't know if this is going to carry us all the way, but I'll finish this thought that I just started while I am on the way to my next stop. Because I don't think I have much choice but to dare the ire of that wolf that I saw earlier. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. I'm going to head up this way and hope the wolf hasn't patrolled in the same direction. So people will say, okay, there's the wolf right there. 
people will say, why don't you, this is a very common common, I've gotten this since some of the old Against All Odds seasons, it's a very common tactic, especially on Interloper. You know, you can start a torch with a match, which is a guaranteed start. Hello. I just heard another wolf behind me. There's a bear over there. Ah, oh, damn. All right. Well, now we get to run. I was right. I did hear a wolf. So now we get to run. Oh, wow. There were two wolves over there. So people will say, why don't you use a torch to start your fires? That way you don't waste matches. And it's like, okay, so... In the Long Dark, the way that the mechanics are currently designed, you can use a match to light a torch, and it's a guaranteed fire start. Guaranteed fire start. Which is... pretty crazy. I mean, it, I mean in terms of the torch lighting, is what I mean. It's, it, won't, it won't guarantee that the fire itself will light right away. But the torch, 100% of the time, if you use a match, will light, and then you can use the same torch that used one match multiple times to light a fire. So strategically, game-wise, clearly the right thing to do if you want to save matches, working within the systems that are provided to you as a player, clearly what you need to do is you need to use the torch rather than use matches. But I find it somewhat ridiculous, personally, and immersion breaking, that a torch will just light every single time with a match with a hundred percent success because there's no such as no there's no such thing as a success rate for a torch lighting right but it will take even if you're using a match or a torch go away it will take even if you're using a match or a torch Yeah, he's going to skip right around that torch. See? That did a whole lot of nothing. Please get distracted and attack that deer, please. That would be amazing if you could do that. I think it did. Perfect. All right, this gives me a chance to... Oh, that was amazing. All right, so now I can finish this thought with a little bit more focus while enjoying this cattail that I'm about to use to save my own life. Any other cattails in the area? Nope. All right. So I find it kind of immersion-breaking that you have a 100% chance to light a torch with a match, and then you can use that torch multiple times to light a fire. I realize that that is a tactic that you can use. But for me personally, for a very long time, I've gotten better, and I, I, I don't understand, looking back on some of my old logic, I don't understand why I ever had an issue with chaining torches, for example. So I'm happy to concede that my stubbornness about that mechanic was unwarranted. But in the case of using torches in Interloper to save matches, I understand why it works. I just don't like it very much. It feels... It's a lot on the gamey side. The idea that you can have an easier time starting a torch with a match than a fully prepared with kindling fire with a match is a little bit much for me. So that is my answer to that question, for those of you curious. Not at all critical of anyone who plays it that way. My personal gameplay preferences are not to do things that feel particularly gamey when I'm playing a game like this. I tend to kind of immerse my imagination in the game that I'm playing. And so sometimes just playing the system in order to, you know, get the best possible results is not very satisfying to me personally. And that is why, hey, combat pants. Heck yeah. Put those on. Now I do need a snack game. If you could help me with that, that would be wonderful. There's nothing in that filing cabinet at all. That makes me incredibly sad. There should be something up in the kitchen, so I probably just need to go up there as soon as I can. Are there really no matches here at all? <laughs> Where are our guaranteed matches? Not here, apparently. Let's check the first aid kit. Well, this stuff will come in handy. Antibiotics.
And that being said, I'm happy to talk about it in the comments too. It's something we've talked about on the channel in the past. It's been a while and it's a legitimate question, especially if I'm going to play on like interloper level with this level of scarcity of matches and everything else. But I've gotten by on this code for a very long time without using that particular trick. So I'm okay with actually having a certain fire start chance using a match and with burning through a few matches if I fail. You're supposed to have a certain chance of wasting a match like that. And I don't like using a workaround, which I consider using a torch to do that. I consider it just kind of a cheap workaround, personally. All right, no food at all. There could be some in here. I'm lucky. But, it's, oh, there's a can opener. Nice. So, well, actually, that's not true. I didn't find no food. I just had, I didn't have anything to open that with, but now I do. So, first of all, let's go ahead and eat those pinnacle peaches. I should have put my lantern out first. So, that was a difficult, you know, thought to get out while being chased by a wolf. Multitasking a little bit there. So hopefully that made sense. I haven't articulated that fully in a while, but I was just thinking in response to either getting the suggestion a couple of times, not just in this, but in the Against All Challenges meta series, and since this series started, like, why don't you do that? And that's why. Or whatever it might be worth. Okay. There's another sewing kit. Holy crap. That's nice. There's a baseball cap, which I guess is kind of useful. It's not the best headgear in the game, and I think the improvised headgear is still better than the baseball cap, but depending on the condition of it, I guess we'll find out in just a moment. We might still be able to uh, get an improvement to our temperature there. It does seem like those combat pants helped out, because we're definitely warm enough in here. And it's probably warm enough in here to begin with, plus we are using that lantern. I do, I, I would say as well that I generally doubt that I will find myself, it's possible, but I doubt that I'll find myself backing away from that particular stubbornness in the same way that I backed away from torch chaining. Because torch chaining makes sense to me, but the fact that you can always light a torch with a match, 100% of the time, in order to take advantage of the mechanic that you're talking about, Bread is about two parts flour to one part water. Add equal parts salt and rising agent, a small pile of about the size of a quarter, yeast if you're lucky, baking soda if you're not. Raw dough should be tacky but not wet after kneading. Heat at 400 uh, Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius for three, 30 minutes if the oven works. If you only have a fire, drop the dough in a heavy preheated pan and rotate every 10 minutes until evenly brown. And you hear a hollow sound when tapping the crust. Backer 3781. That was a clever addition I've always found. Just a quick bread recipe. Doesn't have to be some profound note left behind by one survivor to give to another. I think I saw something else by the... Oh yeah, there's some wires. We might be able to use some of these components I've been picking up in this episode. Oh, there's some maple syrup. Hope nobody needs this anymore. 50% condition. I'm going to go ahead and consume that. 850 calories. That is a lucky find. But anyway, yeah, I don't see myself backtracking on it in exactly the same way, because, again, you have a 100% chance to start a torch with a match every single time you have that 100% chance. And yet there's a more limited chance for starting a fire. You have all the kindling that you need in the world, and there's always a slight chance that the fire won't start. And when you think about a real-world situation where you have a torch, like a really basic torch with no fuel and a match, and a fire with kindling and a match, you can probably do, do more with the match and the fire than you could with the match and the torch. Most of the time. So it's that guaranteed torch starting chance with a single match that I prefer to avoid. When starting fires, that is.
And if it causes me to waste matches, then so be it. I think that's part of the game. There's Again, there's always supposed to be a certain risk when you're starting fires. That's why you want to try and find a fire striker, if at all possible. And I certainly will do so. Okay. A few more places to check. I'm really happy I found that maple syrup, because that'll give me the ability to head to Signal Hill. Feeling reasonably confident. Nice. Okay. More ketchup chips. Firearm cleaning kit. I'll go ahead and take that. Although, I might already have one. I can't recall. Alright, so if there's a firearm cleaning kit, that might mean there's a firearm nearby. Every now and then, the game will be nice with the loot tables and put stuff together like that in a way that makes sense. Oh, I see a clothing item. That's a ski jacket. Nice. That's another huge win, clothing-wise. Also, yeah, see, the cap is just is not as good. So now we're doing much better, though, overall. I might be able to repair the cap and get more out of it, but for now, that's pretty good. All right, one more place to check. Anything under the bed? Nothing that I see. All right, I'm sad not to have found a bedroll yet. There's revolver ammo, that's nice. Still no revolver, though. Might have to do a bit of inventory management before I leave here, just to make sure that I'm not carrying ridiculous amounts of things I don't need to carry. I do tend to travel slightly encumbered in most long dark play. That's just, again, it's my style. I do my best to inventory manage where possible, but I always take into account the possibility that I might not find my way back to a supply cache that I've dropped off. Later in the game, when I'm very confident in all of my gear that I have, that I'm hunting and that I'm able to get around the world, I can loosen up with that. But for the most part, I, uh, I tend not to kind of have that level of swagger early on. I assume that I will need most of the things that I find at some point. And yes, that does occasionally bite me in the butt. And by occasionally, I mean all the time. <laughs> As my community loves to remind me. But it's just my preference. Okay, so let's see what I've got here. I have enough time now to shred some of this stuff. And I would really like to, because I'm carrying around, speaking of things I'm lugging around, I'm carrying around a lot of additional clothing items. So tell you what, let's just do... Every time I stop, I'll harvest one thing, you know, that gives me some additional resources. And also, it looks like I can repair the ski jacket. It'll take 45 minutes. But this is worth doing. I have plenty of sewing. Really? Just immediate fail? Not even going to try to put 20 minutes into it first? Wow. All right. All right. That's the only repair I want to do for now. Let me go ahead and head up to... Hang on, I just want to make absolutely sure I didn't overlook a, like a revolver anywhere. I think there's a pretty good chance I might find one at Signal Hill. Alright, here we go. I'm going to head out this way just so that I can spot for any wolves. Again... Oh, nice. Oh, the bear is literally right there. That's not nice. That's not what I wanted. Let's leave that door open in case I need to run through it. But at least with the bear being there... Hang on, let me check the porch here. Anything? 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 No. At least with the bear being there, I can sneak into the car, which I haven't been able to do in the last couple of series In while I was doing the challenges. I feel like I've barely gotten out to this car at all. Is that a wolf? Yeah, it's a wolf in the distance. Not closer, though. All right, I do have a pry bar now, so I can go ahead and search locked trunks. That trunk is not locked, though. Hacksaw! Perfect! All right, we are now fully ready for a forge run. I heard a footstep a little bit closer than I would have liked just now, though. Which, I don't love that.
Where did I hear that? That's weird. Okay, so here's what I'll do. It looks like the bear is walking towards the shed that I need to walk now. I love the fact that that shed is there. Still one of my favorite new things about Pleasant Valley. It makes the next trip that I'm about to make, which is the trip up to Signal Hill, much more manageable. All right, so there's a car battery. That's nice. Oh, man, really? You're going to do that to me, game? Oh, that's so rude, because we actually... Hang on. That's so rude, because we, we need to have a battery up at the top of Signal Hill. I just need to remember that that's there. I'm going to give this bear a wide berth. As a matter of fact, while I'm doing that, let me step all the way over the hill here and check for cattails along the shore. And I can make my way towards the bridge and then cut back across to that barn. There's a wolf right there. I do need to be cautious. No thickets any closer, which is good. There's a thicket right there. Manageable distance. And I see some cattails. Wunderbar. That is welcome. Did I drop that on the ground? I did. I'll keep the cattail head just in case I need to start a fire at some point. I need the kindling. Just saying. Could come in handy. Alright, let me sprint down this way. Thankfully, some of the clothing items I found... I'm staying a little bit warmer in present circumstances. Alright, I'm aware that the bear could be right over this hill, so I'm trying to hug these rocks. Literally hug. Embrace. Like my life depends on it, because it does. Okay, nice. The wind is actually dying down. I will have the ability to sleep in this shed if I need to. This trunk has been kind of lucky for me in my past couple of long dark runs. Specifically on the channel, or at least in one of them. <laughs> Not this time. Sewing primer. Alright, so I'm finding lots of good skill books that I will need to read at some point. I might actually have the opportunity to do that if I have to stay the night at the at the shed here. Honestly, now that I think about it, it might be a good chance for me to do that. Okay. I think I'm going to go the long way around to the front of the shed here just so that I can put eyes on the bear before I approach from the road. Yeah. Where's the bear? All right, I see bunnies. That's a good sign. I do not see the bear. Anyway, there it is. All right. Okay. Feeling better. Let me step in here real fast. Nothing here. And now we step inside the shed. And again, there's a possibility we can find some nice stuff in here. But the main reason that I love this place is just that it's an amazing waypoint. There was a revolver spawn possible in here in past loot tables, but since the loot table was refreshed, I don't know if that is any longer the case. So I just want to be very careful because I remember vividly a past episode of Against All Odds. I believe it was Against All Odds. where there was a revolver in here and I did not see it. Because they, they just, you know, they get kind of camouflaged just a little bit. All right, let me step up here. And see if there's anything in the dead guy up top. Assuming that the body is still there. The body might not be there every time. But if I can... Hmm... Man, I hate that that battery was so far away. So I could potentially repair that. The transponder on top of Signal Hill. I can still do some of the repairs, but the battery I'll have to bring up later. I don't know that I'm going to do a ton of that stuff right now. It doesn't make sense to sink a lot of time into it, but I can drop off some of the materials that I've found so far at Signal Hill. Alright, dead guy is here. 
Oh, oh my God. I think I can use this. Hello? What? All right, we can only put that on the outer layer, but that is an amazing, amazing find. Rabbit skin hat. Moldy chocolate bar. I'll take it. I would prefer the moldy part not be there, but you know. <laughs> not going to complain about it. Let me go ahead and eat that before its condition drops any lower for risk management reasons. And I think it's probably a good idea. Let me think. I'm carrying a lot of water right now, but I'm starting to consume it. I don't want to waste time harvesting anything right now. Yeah. Tell you what. I'm going to try and make it to Signal Hill before we wrap up here. I think I've got a pretty good shot, and I would like to try and take it. All right, no bear nearby. Yeah, especially having the gear that I have now. That rabbit skin hat is going to come in very handy for just general, <laughs> shall we say, maneuverability. The ability to get around, the ability to traverse the world confidently and effectively. So I'm just going to slowly meander this way. I'm a little bit encumbered, but a lot of the things that are weighing me down, some of it anyway, I can drop off up here by the tower. And I'm pretty sure I can just leave it in the snow. I don't think that'll hurt its condition at all. I'm a little bit nervous about the slopiness of this terrain, though, because I'm not able to spy for furry woodland friends of the medium or large-sized variety. But if I can get up here to the left without hearing bear crows, I'll be content. All right, not bad. Let's go. Yeah, it seems pretty calm at the moment. I'm just going to head straight up this way. I mean, just keep my head on a swivel just to make sure. Yeah, we're good. Oh, hello? No, that's a rock. <laughs> It's like, wait a minute. If that bear is that close, I should hear crows. What's going on? I'm also pretty tired. But there is a bed up here. For a second, I was like, oh no, I don't have a bed or a bedroll. But yeah, there's a bed up here. So I will be able to spend the night. And there's usually, even on the new loot tables, there's a pretty good drop rate for food items here. I do not have, I don't think, any bandages. I don't, so I'm hoping I don't sprain here, otherwise I'll have to make some in real time. It will be fine, but I'd prefer not to. The game wants to be nice to me, which it probably doesn't, let's be honest. There we go. Yes, I totally stepped onto that rock as soon as I could to to give myself the flat ground as soon as I could. Ooh, that was an actual shiver there. All right, we are really hoping for a bedroll. That would be the huge win here, and that's what I want to try and go for for this episode. That would be the W, but it doesn't have to be a bedroll. Really? You're calling this a slope game, really? It's barely sloped. There we go. <laughs> I do also, I'm being a little bit quiet because I want to listen for bear crows. Every now and then, 
I don't know if it's still the case, but I just have memories of a bear being up here, kind of circling the hut. And I'd prefer not to find myself in that situation with nothing to defend myself right now, because that would be the end of the run, and we'd have to start over. I haven't mentioned that, by the way, but I, I didn't mention it in episode one. If I die quite early in the run, like first 20 episodes, if something terrible happens, I'll restart. We'll keep it going. We're not going to let it end that quickly. That's pretty normal policy for me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab these while I'm staring at them. Okay. Looking good. I don't hear a bear. Here's our transponder. See, this, the battery would have been nice. Can't do anything with this yet, but at least we can have it in place. Yeah, repair battery. All right, so we need five scrap metal. So we can't quite repair the metal yet. We can't repair the battery. So that's at least part of it. Let's close that up. I might still leave some of my other... I might leave some of my other components here, to tell you the truth. But let's look around here first. I'm really curious before I end this episode. Are we going to find it? Oh, <gasps> no freaking way come here let's get this done right now that's so exciting it literally put a car battery at the top of signal hill for me notice how much it slowed me down they're 33 pounds like half of my carry weight and i'm tired so i'm not meant to be doing this right now but it's worth taking care of i saw the blue and i thought bedroll but then i saw the battery and it's it's like actually even better now we still need the scrap metal which, because we have the hacksaw, we can get scrap metal. And there we go. Alright, let me quickly, just for the sheer satisfaction of it, we're just going to scout for a bedroll real quick. There's an additional fuse... There's some dog food, revolver ammunition. Is there a bedroll, though? I'll do a full search at the beginning of the next episode. There's another sewing kit. I'm going to pick a bunch of stuff up. Don't see a bedroll at the moment, but plenty to search, and hopefully there will be... Oh, yeah. There's lots of stuff here, so plenty to grab next time I start off. But for now, I'll go ahead and stop this episode here in the next one. Yeah, all of this... Additional food loot. Plenty of stuff here. I see crackers. Uh, nothing under the bed, but yeah, things are things are pointing in a good direction just based on a glance around the maintenance hut at the top of Signal Hill. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and additional perks. New episodes are coming out every day at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.